Hello maths fans, this is Dr Tom Crawford from the University of Oxford and today we're talking about partial differentiation. Partial differentiation is what happens when you differentiate a function of more than one variable. So if we start by considering the standard derivative, so if I want to know df by dx for a function f of x, then this is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x divided by h. If we were to look at the graph of this function, which maybe would be something like the following, so f of x and then x, perhaps it would look something like this, then what we're doing here is we are taking a point here, let's call this x, another point at x plus h, and what we're doing is we're approximating this gradient and we're taking the limit as we allow this point to move closer and closer to x. So we're working out how does our function f change in the x direction. Because f is just a line, what this means is that f can only change in the x direction. So as we move along the x-axis, we're interested in how does the value of f or the value on the y-axis change. So the only real derivative we can do here is df by dx, because that is the only direction in which f is changing. Now if we have a function of several variables, and let's just start with 2, for example, we have f of x and y. So now f depends on both x and y, and so what this is actually going to give you is a surface. So if you were to plot z is equal to some function of x and y, you get a three-dimensional surface which will change in both the x direction and the y direction. So if we consider the example z equals x y squared plus y x cubed. So when we plug this into our Maple Calculator app, we are given the three-dimensional surface plot of this function and we can see that it is indeed a surface. It's changing in both the x and the y directions simultaneously and so therefore it now makes sense that you might want to know how the function is changing in more than one direction. As an example, from this particular viewpoint, we can see that as we move along the x-axis, the function is decreasing. So in this direction, in the x-direction, our function is decreasing. But if we rotate the image, we can now see that along the y-axis, so in the y-direction, our function is increasing. So our function is behaving differently. It is changing in a different way depending on the direction in which we are investigating. And so what partial derivatives really do is allow us to calculate the rate of change for a given direction. So the x partial derivative tells us how does our function f of x, y, how does that change specifically moving in the x direction? And then the y partial derivative will tell us how our function changes if we only move in the y direction. So mathematically, our definitions are going to be as follows. If I want to know the partial x derivative of f, where f is a function of x and y, first of all we use this curly d notation, and this just says that this is a partial derivative compared to the standard or full derivative in this situation. And we define this to be the limit as h tends to zero, so unchanged so far, 
of f of x plus h comma y minus f of x y all divided by h. So you'll notice it's very similar, in fact almost identical to our full or standard derivative df by dx. But in the partial case what we're doing is we're adding our h, our small increment, this is added only to the x coordinate of our function y remains unchanged. So this is telling us that the y coordinate doesn't change. The value of y remains constant. And we're just looking at what happens if we change the x value only. The partial y derivative is of course very similar. So here we're interested in how f changes in the y direction. So we take the same limit as h goes to zero, but now we leave x unchanged, so it's f of x, and now we add h to the y value, then we subtract f of x, y, and then we divide by h. So very similar to the partial x, except now we do the plus h on the y, coordinate because we're interested in how the function changes when we change y and only change y. So the x coordinate here remains constant and we are purely moving a small amount in the y direction and then taking the limit to calculate the y partial derivative. Now that we know the formal mathematical definitions of our partial x and y derivatives. Let's actually work through an example of the function we looked at earlier, f of x, y is x, y squared plus y, x cubed. So let's compute the partial derivatives to see how this works in practice. And the key thing here is to remember that when you're doing your x partial derivative, y doesn't change. So that means you can basically treat y as a constant. And similarly, when you do your y partial derivative, x isn't changing. So therefore you treat x as a constant. So if f of x, y is x, y squared plus y, x cubed. If we calculate first df by dx, so our usual rules of differentiation apply we still differentiate any function of x as though it is a full or standard derivative. However, remember y is constant in our x partial, so these y terms just treat them like any other constant. They are just a number that we just ignore pretty much. So what I mean by that is if I do df by dx, this first term, x times y squared, when y is constant, this is just constant times x. So when I differentiate a constant function times x, I just get the constant. So the derivative on x behaves as normal, the derivative of x is just one, and then I'm still multiplying by my constant, which here just happens to be y squared. The next term, the y is again constant, so I just keep that. And then what's going to happen is I differentiate x cubed exactly as I would normally. So I bring the 3 down, bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, x squared. So the x partial derivative is just y squared, because this is linear in x, y is constant, plus the cubed term becomes a squared, bring the three down, and again, just leave the y there because it's a constant. Now the y derivative is very similar, but this time we just treat x as a constant. So the x is constant, I've got a y squared, so if I differentiate y squared, I get two y. So overall, the x remains where it is, I get two xy. And then the next term, so x again is constant, this is just constant times y, 
So a linear function in y just gives me the constant, which here would just be x cubed. And that's pretty much it. This would be our partial x derivative, and this is our partial y derivative. Now we can go a little bit further. We can calculate uh, the second order derivatives. So d2f by dx squared. And so that just means take this derivative here, df by dx, and differentiate again with respect to x, where we remember y doesn't change, so y is a constant. So this one, the first term is a constant, differentiates to give zero. And then if I do my x derivative on x squared, the two comes down, so I get six y x. So that is my second x partial derivative of the function f. We can also calculate our second y derivative in the same way. So d2f by dy squared. So that is going to be the y derivative of df by dy. Remembering that x is a constant here. So this x cubed term goes to zero because it's just the derivative of a constant. And here, again, x is the constant. We differentiate the linear function of y. So we're just going to get 2x. And we could carry on. We can calculate higher and higher derivatives. We can even mix the derivatives. So we could do d2f by dx dy, or even d2f by dy dx, where you're changing the order. So one of them means do x derivative first, then the y derivative, and the other one would mean y derivative first, then x derivative. And I do recommend trying this out for yourself to get practice with doing partial derivatives of higher orders, maybe with mixed derivatives. So just pick any function f of x, y, you can plug it into the Maple Calculator app and it will automatically tell you the x and y partial derivatives of the function once you enter it into the app. So you should do it yourself first and then you can use the app to check your answer and sort of mark your own work and see if you're beginning to grasp how partial differentiation works. All of the other rules about differentiation that you may have learned, for example, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, these all still apply when doing partial derivatives. So I've got another example here, which is a little bit more complicated, but we'll go through the first partial derivatives to give you a feel for how the product quotient and chain rules work in this context. So f of x, y is going to be x squared plus 2x, all multiplied by sine of x squared plus y plus e to the y minus 2x. So first of all, let's calculate our x partial derivative, df by dx. We remember that y doesn't change, y is now a constant. So this is just now a constant, as is the y in the exponential. Now, I still need to do the x derivative using product rule and also a chain rule as well. So the first term, let's do a product rule. So let's differentiate the first bracket with respect to x. So that's 2x plus 2. Then I have the second term, which is unchanged. Now I want to differentiate the second term and leave the first term unchanged, as I would for any normal product. So that will give me plus x squared plus 2x multiplied by the x derivative of sine of x squared plus y. So I'm going to have to do a chain rule as well. So we differentiate sine, which gives us cos of x squared plus y. Now, having differentiated the sine, we get cos, but then the chain rule says I have to multiply by the x derivative of the argument of sine. So I've got x squared plus y 
y is a constant in this situation because I'm doing an x partial. So x squared plus constant, if I differentiate that with respect to x, I just get 2x. And that will be the product rule done on that first term. Now we also have to differentiate the exponential. So what I'm going to get here is the exponential is unchanged. So e to the y minus 2x. And then from the chain rule, I have to differentiate the argument. So I need to do the x partial derivative of y minus 2x. y is a constant, so that disappears. And we just get minus 2 from the chain rule. Finally, if we now do the partial y derivative in much the same way, this one is actually a lot easier because we remember that when we're doing a y partial derivative, we've got over here that x isn't changing, x is constant. So this whole term, x squared plus 2x, is just a big old constant. So that just stays where it is. And now what we actually differentiate is the sign term because that has a y dependency. So the derivative of sine gives me cos of its argument. And then the chain rule tells me to differentiate the argument. But when we're doing this with respect to y, x is a constant. So the y partial of x squared plus y is just 1. So you don't actually get an additional factor. And you're going to get the same thing with the exponential, in fact, because the derivative of the exponential gives you back the same exponential multiplied by the y partial of the argument. But again, x is a constant, so that just disappears, and we just get back the derivative of y, which is 1. So this x squared plus 2x times cos of x squared plus y plus e to the y minus 2x, that is our much simpler y partial compared to the slightly more complicated x partial derivative. If you want some more practice with partial differentiation, I've actually set up a worksheet in Maple Learn, which you can access completely for free by clicking the link on screen. So there's plenty of questions for you to have a go at, plenty of partial derivatives for you to calculate. And remember, you can always check your answers by entering the function in the Maple Calculator app, as this will automatically calculate those partial derivatives for you. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this video, and I'll be back soon with some more maths fun.